Hi everyone. So uh, in this lightning talk, we'll just quickly talk about some of the cool C++ compiler flags uh, that we can use for a couple of things. Right, uh, so I'm Sanket Singh and we'll be talking about uh, like a few compiler flags, uh, one of them being the optimization flags in C++. Right, so let's just get started with it. So throughout the talk, uh, I'll be mainly focusing on the GNU specific, uh, uh, the GCC specific compiler uh, flags, right? So the first one is the minus E flag that we have in C++. So in this minus E flag, what's going to happen is that only the preprocessor step, uh, that is the expansion of preprocessor, that will actually happen, and that's it. It's going to pause there, and it's not going to move ahead uh, with the complete compilation process, that is to convert to the final executable binary. So this is one of the compiler flags. One more is uh, the minus S flag now. So this is going to take one step further. And what it's going to do is, it's going to convert your C++ code to the corresponding assembly uh, code altogether, right? And it is going to generate a .s file for you for the assembly code. You can actually uh, read that whole assembly code and uh, try to see what all things it actually does. Now, uh, an interesting thing that you can do with the assembly flag, and not just the assembly flag, but the other flags as well, is the optimization altogether. So C++ provides a couple of optimization levels uh, in the compiler that you can actually use uh, to see that uh, what all things it wants to actually optimize. We'll see the step-by-step, -step, uh, the optimization phase as well. But if you carefully see, uh, what I have done here is, I have actually added the optimization level one flag with the minus S flag that is going to convert it to the corresponding assembly. And what it's going to do is, it's going to make sure that the assembly code that we generate is having some optimization done on it. So for example, uh, I just wrote a, just a sample C++ code without the optimization flag and tried to convert it to the corresponding assembly. Uh, if you will carefully see, there are three, uh, so there are uh, two variables, X and Y, and then they just sum up to corresponding variable Z. And you will see all of their instances being uh, added in the corresponding assembly code. And the overall size of this uh, assembly file, the .s extension file, you can see is slightly bigger. But the moment we try to introduce the optimization flag as well, then you can see the assembly code is much more shorter. The C++ compiler is automatically able to figure out that what all variables is actually being used somewhere is actually required in the overall final execution of the output and what all is not required. Whatever is not required, it's going to just trim it out and just uh, give us the final relevant part of the code. And if you will carefully see, then the size of the final assembly that we get is also slightly uh, lesser. So the bigger the code base, these optimization flags can actually help you a lot. And I just like quickly listed down all the uh, major optimization flags. So just the minus O flag is going to give you the basic optimization. Then there is level one, two, and three. Each level has its own set of uh, progressive optimization that you can actually do. So you can just like try it out all of these uh, like optimization flag and see uh, what all things uh, you are getting, right? Then there are some common flags that you might have like multiple times used. For example, there's a language standard flag uh, using which you can actually define what specific language standard for C++ uh, you need, right? You can actually club this uh, flag with the overall uh, execution flag as well. You can see there is a minus O flag that is coming up that is going to give you the final executable binary altogether. Then there are some of the more flags that is called as the linking flags, the minus L that is going to add a directory to the list. And there is a minus uh, I flag that is going to add the, that's going to link with the library altogether. Just like uh, in one of the lightning talks as well, we saw one of the warning flags that uh, we used the minus wall flag that uh, was there. So that was for commonly used warning options. Then there are a couple of more warning flags that you can actually use. I've listed down all of these on your screens. Uh, for example, there is W extra that is going to enable additional warning beyond the minus wall flag. There is W error that is going to treat all the warnings as specific end-to-end -end errors. Then there is architecture specific flags as well, right? Uh, that is going to help you to generate the code according to a specific architecture, right? So uh, there are some default values that these uh, both of these flags actually take. So depending on what value you are going to give, the other flag also gets tuned according to that. And that was it. I guess we are within five minutes. So thank you everyone, uh, yeah.